Once we have a diagnosis of cancer made, we're looking for solutions that can have the fewest side effects and still give us the result that we want, which is no recurrences. An interesting study on nearly 5,000 people from China who had breast cancer and were from stage one to stage four uh, were treated with cruciferous vegetables. And what they found was that the survival rate increased substantially. It's interesting that for stage four cancers in Western conventional oncology, the survival rate at, at five years is somewhere in the range of 2%. When we're looking at natural lifestyle approaches to, to managing cancers after they've occurred, it's much better than that. The interesting thing they found in this study is that the total mortality over a period of three years decreased depending on which quartile you were in for the amount of cruciferous vegetables you were eating. The mortality decreased overall from 27 to 62 percent. Not, not bad. Show me a chemotherapy that does that. They also looked at breast cancer specific mortality and that was between 22 and 62 percent and the risk for a recurrence decreased between 21 and 35 percent. That's big news from the point of view of comparing what we can do with lifestyle and what we can do with our drugs. And it doesn't mean one or the other, but you can look at it from the point of view of most of the oncologists who really don't pay much attention to lifestyle. They're not talking about diet, really. They're not talking about exercise and stress reduction and sleep and all these factors that are really important that do something to change what our risk for recurrence is. There's a lot of information published in the literature, but when push comes to shove, the emphasis is still on what? Chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery. Now, in the case of vitamin D, we know that if vitamin D levels are low, there's no question the risk of breast, colon, and prostate cancer goes way up. And if your vitamin D levels are normal, that's the best protection you can get, particularly if you combine it with exercise. Powerful way to detox and to reduce your risk for developing some kind of, of, of cancer, as I just mentioned. Alkalinization, making sure that we have a diet that's alkaline so we don't have an acid residue that stresses our body's biochemistry. Because in an acid environment, our enzymes just don't work as well as they should. And how about immune boosters? Doing something that we can do to boost those natural killer cells that are so effective and necessary to treat cancer. So as it turns out, the kinds of cruciferous vegetables that we eat in this country and the kind that we eat that are eaten in China are different. In China, it's mostly turnips, Chinese cabbage, bok choy, and greens. In this country, we're looking at broccoli and Brussels sprouts. And most of the time, what we're looking at is those factors that are the most active ingredients that fight the cancer's return. Those are isothiocyanates and indoles. So we have information here that's really important. Information that sh should be brought to the public attention because cancer is more an epigenetic disease than it is a genetic disease. And what that means is, is it's the environment you live in, it's the lifestyle that you choose, it's the things that you do to maintain good health that are going to protect you against cancer. And if you have it, are what is going to help you the most to not get a recurrence.